dear students welcome to this new lecture of wireless communication so today we will start an entirely new topic which is called mimo so mimo the name stands for multiple input and multiple output so you have been introduced to this term in some of the previous lectures but in this lecture we will go through the details and we will learn more about the theory behind this multiple input multiple output communications so this technology <clears throat> is used in all uh, modern day mobile communication systems so starting from 4g uh, and then 5g will also be using mimo so we will see uh, what are the benefits of mimo and how can uh, this MIMO technology enhance the capacity of your communication systems. So as the name suggests, so multiple input and multiple output. So you have multiple antennas on the input side or in your transmitters. So as you can see in this uh, diagram, you have many antennas that come out of the transmitter and then in the receiver also you have multiple antennas and all antennas transmit at the same time over the same resource and the resource can be a frequency or a waveform or um, in some cases it could be a different polarization so when you have these multiple uh, antennas transmitting at the same time it is obvious that the signals that come out of these antennas will interfere with each other. But this, uh, this phenomenon, this interference in the case of MIMO is used as an advantage. Okay, So this is not a problem in case of MIMO because if <coughs> the antennas are spaced apart at a particular um, you know uh, angle and and uh, spacing then these signals that come out from these multiple antennas can interfere but in a constructive fashion okay and if the signals are decoded jointly uh, then this is not a problem this is basically an advantage okay so we will see what we mean by that uh, in in a few minutes so so as i was saying advantages of multiple antennas um, there are many advantages so one of them is the array gain so if uh, some of you have gone through a module on antenna theory uh, you will know that uh, if you have multiple antennas that are spaced at a particular length which is related to the wavelength of the signal that the antennas are uh, transmitting then you can form an array of antennas with a combined gain which is much more than a single antenna so so having multiple antennas can be advantageous it will provide you the array gain and then you will have improved SNR and you will also have extended coverage and then because of multiple antennas there are other advantages so for example uh, you can have something called spatial diversity okay so I will come to this concept of diversity in a few slides from now so because of this diversity uh, there is a there is a reduced effect of the fading due to the wireless channel and you can have um, reduction in your error rates and then of course uh, if you have multiple antenna then you can also have multiplexing gain and this provides you with a better spectral efficiency which means increased number of bits per channel can be transmitted and finally you also have the advantage of interference reduction so so this interference this is uh, this case at some uh, cases can be advantageous at some cases can be disadvantageous but in case of MIMO we 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 use this interference or we exploit this interference to our advantage 
so in physics you might have learned about constructive interference and destructive interference okay so if the phase difference between two signals um, has certain relationship then it can you know reinforce each other and have constructive interference uh, it can you know uh, nullify each other also depending on the phase relationship and in that case you will have destructive interference so in case of uh, MIMO we exploit the constructive interference because of these um, multiple antennas okay so <clears throat> so these are the advantages of multiple antennas so now let's move on to the concept of diversity okay so diversity as the name suggests so you have you have multiple antennas and you have different copies of the signal that are transmitted uh, through those multiple antennas and then in the receiver side also you have multiple antennas so you are receiving multiple copies of the signals and you are basically exploiting the diversity that is associated with these multiple transmission and multiple reception okay so it's a powerful communication receiver technique that provides wireless link improvement at relatively low cost so you don't need to do anything else you don't need to put any fancy hardware or any other signal processing techniques just by exploiting this diversity uh, you can have a very strong signal at the at the receiver and you can uh, you can enhance the signal to noise ratio at the receiver by as high as 20 to 30 dB okay so so the only only catch here is that you have to select the multiple copies of the signal that you are receiving and then uh, either you select them intelligently or combine them intelligently okay so so there are different uh, classification of diversities so uh, what is meant here by selecting them intelligently is that you can select the strongest signal out of the multiple signals that you are receiving so that is uh, that actually is called selection diversity uh, you can also combine all the received signals together and then add them in a fashion uh, that the overall combined signal is uh, much uh, better or, or much higher in signal power compared to let's say one particular copy of the signal so there are many techniques we will we will again uh, discuss them in detail but this is the overall concept of diversity and then uh, under this diversity there are two major types of diversity one is called the microscopic diversity and the other is called the macroscopic diversity so in microscopic diversity um, it's basically it's basically the antenna diversity that we were talking about okay so so this microscopic diversity is what we just talked about so these these techniques exploit small scale fading characterized by deep and rapid amplitude fluctuations as the mobile moves over distances of just a few wavelengths so so for example in case of small scale fading if two antennas are separated by a fraction of meter one may receive a weak signal while the other may receive a strong signal so here i want you to emphasize on the fact that there are two antennas so you can have more than two antennas and that is what uh, we are we are trying to appreciate in in case of MIMO so when you have multiple antennas more than one then then the signal that you receive from them okay and uh, and there is another criteria the, the antennas has to be separated by a fraction of meter and in that case um, if you combine the signals that come from these antennas okay then uh, you can achieve uh, microscopic diversity so here if you if you read this line it says by selecting the best signal at all times 
the receiver can mitigate small scale fading effects okay so <clears throat> so not just by selecting the best signal you can also you know um, choose more than one uh, best signals and then combine them together as well to achieve uh, this type of diversity so uh, so this is also called antenna diversity as i just said and sometimes it is also called space diversity so this is an example this diagram shows you an example of microscopic diversity so you imagine that you have multiple antennas antenna 1 to antenna m and uh, this mobile uh, which is moving i mean uh, the mobile unit inside this car uh, is sending multiple signals to to these antennas which are let's say in your base station and uh, one signal is traveling through a smaller path the other is traveling through a larger path so obviously this will have more um, attenuation and um, this will be affected by more fading than than let's say this one and then you can combine these two signal okay to to generate um, a better signal or you can choose the best signal let's say this one to to mitigate the effect of fading okay so this is uh, microscopic diversity you can also have macroscopic diversity so in macroscopic diversity the basically um, the large scale fading characteristics uh, that are caused by shadowing due to variation in both the terrain profile and the nature of the surroundings so these are exploited in macroscopic diversity so so macroscopic diversity is mostly associated with the base stations okay so so this is more on a bigger scale that's why that name macroscopic so by selecting a base station which is not shadowed when others are the mobile can improve substantially the average SNR on the forward link okay so so macroscopic diversity is also useful at the base station receiver so let's see this example so you have two base stations base station one is behind a hill let's say and because of this you are experiencing a large scale fading or shadowing okay so this is the phenomenon of shadowing which you have learned before okay in, in in a previous lecture in wireless communication so base station one uh, obviously uh, is receiving a very weak signal from your mobile station whereas base station two is receiving a strong signal so you can combine the two um, you know inputs from the, both the base stations and then uh, you can have an output which is um, which is much stronger um, so this this phenomenon is called macroscopic diversity so so when when you are doing handoff so you have studied about handoff as well so handoff is an example of macroscopic diversity because in handoff you are basically trying to assess that which base station is sending you the strongest signal okay so so and and then you are you are handing off to that particular base station so that is also a kind of microscopic diversity where you are trying to uh, achieve the best signal to noise ratio by choosing the strongest um, strongest base station okay um, or you can also combine the two signals from the two base stations and then have a, a combined uh, output so uh, this this combination happens in case of you know CDMA systems uh, or, or in case of 4G systems and these are called uh, sometimes this when you are doing this combination this is called soft handoff okay so so this is from a high level the concept of macroscopic diversity uh, i will upload uh, some more references if you are interested to 
learn more about this microscopic diversity i will upload some references um, in your bright space for you to go through so let's move on uh, so so as i was saying so in case of your diversity um, in the in the previous few slides you saw that we were talking about selecting the best signal okay so selecting the best signal is one way of achieving diversity but a more general way is combining okay so so let's say you have multiple antenna antenna 1 to m okay and then um, after some signal processing you are you are having uh, these uh, values here so these are basically uh, this alpha one they stand for the complex fading envelope so basically they account for both the attenuation and the and the phase change because of the multipath so alpha one al to alpha m these are basically the complex fading envelope okay so they will be of the form of, of let's say uh, a constant alpha or let's say a constant alpha i and then the complex term will be the <coughs> will be the phase change associated with this particular branch or this particular uh, multipath and then uh, eb is the bit energy so square root of eb is the amplitude so alpha i times the square root of eb times b where b is the transmitted bit so this can be either one or zero okay and then the noise term is there uh, due to the additive white gaussian noise so so these terms are then received and uh, you have a gain associated with, with each of these branches so g1 to gm so gi is the gain at the ith branch and then you combine all of them together to get an output okay now these few cases can occur okay so let's say let's say if your gi the gain in the ith uh, branch is equal to alpha i okay so gi uh, is equal to the fading uh, envelope then this uh, this category of diversity combining is called maximum gain combining okay if all these gi's are equal to one or some some constant k let's say um, then this is called equal gain combining and then G, if you said gi equal to let's say zero or one then you have selection combining so if let's say this gi is one uh, and then all other GIs are zero. Uh, okay, then you are basically selecting this branch. Uh, so whichever branch has the strongest signal for that particular branch, if you set your GI equal to one, and for all other GIs, okay, for all other GJs, uh, if you set it equal to zero, where I not equal to J, then you will have selection. Uh, combining okay so you can have uh, either of these three okay maximum gain equal gain or selection combining so if your GI is equal to one then or, or a constant then it's very intuitive and obvious that why it is called equal gain combining if your G if one of your GI's are one and the rest are zero then it is called selection combining this part is also obvious and intuitive but if your gi is equal to alpha i why is it called maximum gain combining uh, we will just see that okay so basically if you set gi equal to alpha i then your uh, the, the the snr at the output here is maximized and that's why it is called maximum gain combining okay and we will see that with this example so let's say we have a one cross four uh, system uh, as shown in this figure and uh, 
these are your complex uh, fading envelopes okay so this problem uh, uses some different notations but uh, um, try to appreciate that um, here whatever is h i that was actually your alpha i in the previous um, in the in the previous um, slide here so so basically uh, just let let not uh, focus too much on the on the notations just try to appreciate the concepts here so let's say h i is here are the complex fading envelope and they are all given here h1 h2 h3 and h4 okay and then whatever you are receiving okay y1 y2 y3 y4 you are multiplying them with some gains and here the gains are named as alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 and alpha 4 okay again these are different notations but uh, just try to appreciate the concept here so here the alpha i's are the gains and h i's are the uh, fading envelope sorry okay so now if you multiply all these signals uh, all this uh, y1 y2 y3 and y4 with the respective gains and then combine them together then you have the output signal capital y here okay so uh, with this information uh, let's find out like in case of maximum gain combining what are the coefficients alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 and alpha 4 so basically you are asked to find the gains okay uh, if you want to have um, maximum gain combining okay so we will see that these alpha i's will be equal to h i for for maximum gain combining okay which we established here also like if the g i's are equal to alpha i so here in this example alpha i's are equivalent to h i's and g i's are equivalent to the alpha i's so i'm sorry about this confusion with the notations but this uh, particular uh, diagram is uh, from a particular reference and then this uh, problem example problem that I have picked up is from another reference so um, basically here we are using different notations but uh, the concepts are same okay so so the the main uh, main uh, thing is that we need to show that uh, for this particular example your alpha is equal to hi for mgc okay so we will find this alpha is uh, for maximum gain combining and then for equal gain combining these will be all equal okay and then uh, if the transmitted symbol is this then what are the received symbols so uh, in case of egc and mgc so once you solve for part a and part b this part will be uh, easy so let's uh, focus on the part a first okay so we have the received signal um, ri uh, equal to hi time the input xi plus the noise ni okay so so let's say xi is uh, square root of eb times b okay where b is the transmitted bit and eb is the bit energy so therefore um, you have ri equals to hi times square root of eb times b plus ni where i equal to 1 to n so in our particular example we have i equal to 1 to 4 okay so we have four branches as you saw here <coughs> 1 2 3 4 so <coughs> so if each branch has gain alpha i then the resulting signal envelope uh, after the addition okay so you are basically <coughs> multiplying with these alphas and then adding so the resulting envelope will be uh, this sum over all i alpha i times r i okay so so this is your final sum okay so this is the signal part and this is the noise part right so now let's focus on the noise part so the total noise power okay 
will be this okay and this comes directly from this part so if you take the total noise power so this is basically the expectation of this summation alpha i times n i square okay uh, <coughs> or rather <coughs> let me so this will be the square comes inside okay so this is the this is the total noise power okay so this is this is basically your nt and if you work this out if you if you square this summation so this will be all these square terms okay this will be the sum of all the individual square terms plus the sum of this cross terms okay <coughs> like this okay so so the cross terms if you take the expectation of the cross terms so the noises are uh, you have seen before this, since this is additive white gaussian noise these are uncorrelated so these terms will all be zero the expectation of these terms will be all zero so we will be left with only this part okay and this part if you if you take the expectation this will be basically um, each of these n i square okay so the sum of alpha i square will be remaining here and the expectation of n i square is the noise variance sigma square okay so so you can write this n t equal to this and then this is basically what we have here so the sigma square comes outside the summation and you have uh, the sum of alpha i square where i equal to 1 to m so now if you want to find out the snr of the output okay so the snr will be basically this is the signal part okay so the square we have to do the square of this part because we are doing the signal power so snr is basically signal power divided by noise power right so noise power we have found here and the signal power is this entire term square okay if you take the square of this entire term then we have what what is here in the numerator so this eb will be squared so this will come in front and if this b is squared okay so usually when you have ones and zeros then this is basically transmitted as plus one and minus one okay so they have a bipolar signal so so b is basically either plus one or minus one and if you take b square then this will be always plus one okay so eb squared b square squared uh, i mean square root of eb squared is eb and b square squared is 1 so these two terms will come outside the summation and inside the summation we will have the sum of i equal to 1 to m alpha i time h i and the whole squared of that okay so this is your uh, numerator and this is your denominator so now here we are applying the Cauchy Schwartz inequality. So this Cauchy Schwartz inequality says that this term, whatever is here, is maximized, or 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 in other words, uh, the maximum of this term is basically these two individual terms. So uh, basically the sum of a product of some of some terms are less than equal to the product of the sums okay 
So this is what we are using. This is the Cauchy Schwartz inequality. So this is a product alpha i times h i and we are taking the sum of that. This product is always less than the sum of alpha i square and the sum of h i squares. Okay. So, <clears throat> so this is this is what we are using here. So therefore we are writing that this SNR which is denoted by this numerator and this denominator is less than equal to uh, this term where in the numerator we have this individual products um, I mean individual sums separated out okay and uh, the equality holds so this is less than equal to and the equality holds when h i is equal to alpha i okay so so this SNR has an upper bound which is given by this expression and this SNR is equal to that upper bound or equal to its maximum value when you have HI equal to alpha i. Okay. So this is where this HI equal to alpha i concept comes for maximum gain combining. So your SNR is maximized when you have HI equal to alpha i. And if you set h i equal to alpha i, then this SNR is simplified to this expression. Okay. So, so therefore, going back to the problem, so for MGC, uh, if your alpha i is set to h i for all i uh, equal to one to four, then you have maximum gain combining. For equal gain combining, you can set it to one or any constant value okay so the now if you just work out so all these hi values were given to you so if you said alpha equal to hi and work the problem then you will find the final output to be equal to this and for egc you will find the final output to be equal to this okay so here there is a disclaimer here these uh, final values these calculations just check yourself do this yourself uh, there could be some calculation errors um, so this is a disclaimer uh, you can work this out and find out if uh, your answer matches with my answer if, if yes then very good if not then uh, my apologies <coughs> so now moving on with the with the rest of the concepts of my book so there are some challenges or obstacles to MIMO and uh, basically the obstacles are the hardware costs uh, because you have multiple antennas uh, so that means you have multiple RF chains so consumer electronics especially sensitive to cost um, arguments and then there are uh, energy requirements also so more complicated signal processing is required because of uh, these multiple antennas and then uh, you have this real estate for multiple antennas so um, basically if you want to have more antennas then you also need to have uh, them you know uh, you also need to have them uh, housed in you know uh, uh, a big area or, or, or a big real estate so that's uh, that, that's the problem with MIMO now for MIMO you can have different actually variations so so basically MIMO is multiple input multiple output so you can have uh, the most trivial case which is the single input single output so CISO and then you can have single input and multiple output so you can call it CIMO and then you can have multiple input and single output which you can call MISO okay so <coughs> So these are uh, different subsets of MIMO. Uh, moving on, 
Uh, Let us take an example of a 3 cross 3 MIMO system. So, you have um, 3 antennas in the input side and 3 antennas in the receiving side. So, <coughs> so in the input side you have this bit stream that is uh, coming out from a transmitter. So, you have this bits number as B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6 and so on. Uh, so, uh, basically uh, they are distributed across these three antennas. So, B1 will go here, B2 will go here, B3 will go here, then again B4 will go to the first antenna, B5 to the second antenna, B6 to the third antenna and so on. So, in this way uh, you are allocating the bits uh, to the three antennas and then uh, you are doing the usual modulation and mapping and then you are sending uh, a RF signal uh, corresponding to this modulation and mapping uh, across the this across these three antennas and they are transmitted wirelessly to the receiving antennas ok. So, so in the receiving antenna the received signal goes through some form of signal processing and then you have the output C1, C2 and C3 which are which are then demodulated and then you get back these uh, separate channels of bits uh, according to this input allocations and then they are combined together uh, to form the original bit stream ok and then you can have uh, different modulations uh, in different antennas. So, here in this example all the three input antennas are having the same modulation which is QPSK as you can see from the constellation. And then uh, this this is how the B 1s look because the B 1 uh, I mean the B's look. So, B 1, B 2, B 3 they will have um, these signals in the presence of noise and as well as interference from the other antennas. So, as you can see A 1 is uh, sending a copy to both B 1, B 2, B 3. So, this is the nature of the MIMO channel ok. So, you have this cross couplings ok. So, B A 2 is sending to B 1, B 2, B 3, A 3 is sending to um, to B1, um, B2, B3. So, basically your B1 will be the signal that you are receiving uh, in the presence of noise and as well as all the interferences from all the three antennas A1, A2, A3. Similarly, B2 will have the same thing, B3 will have the same thing and after this signal processing phase the C1, C2, C3 will look like the usual uh, modulated signals in the presence of just the noise. So, in the presence of noise they will be a little bit smeared like this. So, because of the noise vectors. So, as you can recall from your digital communication uh, knowledge and then this usual demodulations happen uh, and then you can recover the bits ok. So, so another thing is that uh, it is not necessary that all these in three input antennas will have the same modulation format. They can employ different modulation in the different antennas as well. So, that is also possible. So, so this is the typical MIMO system model. So, you have the input bits and then you are doing the coding and interleaving. So, the interleaving uh, is basically the process of you know uh, separating the bits and then mapping it to the different antennas uh, like this ok. So, this is the interleaving part and then you do the symbol mapping and modulation and then you do space time encoding and then there is another block space time pre coding and then finally, you are sending it uh, through the antennas ok. And in the receiver also uh, you are receiving the signals and then you are doing space time processing and space time decoding 
and then you do the symbol demapping which is just opposite to this block in the transmitter and then you are doing the de interleaving and decoding which is opposite to this block in the transmitter so and then finally you get the output bits so let me focus a little bit on these two things uh, these are um, like the details of these are not uh, part of this module so this is beyond the scope of this module however i want to just give you some brief overview so space time encoding is basically you have the transmit antennas and you have different time slots okay so let's say you have one to n t transmit antennas so one two up to n t and let's say you have the t1 to t1 time slots okay okay so any entry in this matrix uh, let's say sij is the modulated symbol to be transmitted in time slot i from an antenna j so sij is this so this one is let's say um, in time slot 1 and antenna 2 this is the symbol that is uh, transmitted okay so uh, so there are there are to be t time slots um, sorry t so this is not t1 so this is t there are to be t time slots at nt transmit antennas and as well as nr receive antennas so so this is this uh, thing is called space time encoding so you have the space dimension across this axis so which is coming because of the multiple antennas that you are using and you have the time dimension so basically uh, you are using a different coding scheme or you can use the same coding scheme uh, but uh, at each time slot and each transmit antenna they have a different symbol here okay so the code rate of the space time um, coding measures uh, how many symbols per time slot it transmits on average over the course of one block okay so so this is one block okay of length t okay this is another block of length t so each antenna is sending a block at a time okay and uh, if a block encodes k symbols the code rate is k over t okay so so this is this is the concept of space time encoding um, there is also a space time precoding uh, sorry uh, space time processing part so this is basically um, the signal processing associated uh, in the receiver so you have n antennas and you are receiving this uh, signals and then you have some um, delay and wait type of mechanism and you are adjusting these delays and these weights uh, and then combining the signals to just uh, mitigate the effect of the multipath fading okay multipath fading and interference so so as you were saying here you have whatever b1 is receiving is um, is is very dirty right let's say uh, so this is this is the effect of both noise and interference okay uh, and also the multipath effect okay so so all these antennas are receiving a very um, scattered you know uh, signal okay so this space time so the signal processing block actually has this space time processing unit where you are just cleaning the signals by adjusting this uh, weights and and these delays and then combining them together so that you get you know uh, a more clean signal like this okay so just in presence of noise okay instead of 
instead of having having this you are getting this ok. So, this is after this space time precoding and you are choosing this w i's these weights to maximize the signal to interference uh, sorry signal to interference and noise ratio s i n r ok. So, so basically you are you are doing this uh, by choosing the weights w i's. So, <coughs> So, that is what is uh, space time processing. Uh, if you want to explore more about this, uh, feel free to consult uh, any reference that you can find from the internet, ok. But uh, more details than this is beyond the scope of this module. So, I am just skipping those details and I will now focus more on just the MIMO part. So, moving on. Um, let us uh, let us have a theoretical model for the MIMO channel ok. So, as you can see you have this um, input. So, in the transmitter side uh, x 1 x 2 x up to x m. So, let us say you have m inputs and n outputs ok. So, you have y 1, y 2 up to y n and then in between you have this MIMO channel which looks a bit clumsy because you have all this uh, cross terms. So, you have uh, you have this uh, different uh, channel coefficients ok. So, uh, I will get back to this in a few minutes. So, let us say your channel matrix, this channel is characterized by a matrix capital H. So, you can write your output vector y as h times the input vector plus the noise vector ok. So, so this is the transmitted signal vector or the input vector and this is the received signal vector. So, they have this relationship ok. And your um, your capital H would look like this. So, this will consist of all these coefficients uh, h 1 1, h 1 2 etcetera. So, h i j is basically the coefficient for the ith input antenna. and the jth output antenna ok. So, this is the channel matrix for the MIMO channel and then the noise vector is of the same size um, as the input vector ok. Um, so, this is uh, n 1 n 2 up to n m and um, the transmit power is usually constrained. So, you are you are transmitting over multiple antennas. So, if if all the antenna powers are summed up ok, uh, you will get this term ok. So, this is also denoted as a matrix multiplication. So, your x is the input uh, vector. Uh, so, you denote this as x times x Hermitian. So, Hermitian this means Hermitian of a matrix means. So, this is called Hermitian. So, let us say if you have a matrix A then A Hermitian is basically the complex conjugate of A transpose ok. So, these this these are there are few concepts here that you need to recall from your knowledge of matrix algebra. So, if you have a matrix let us say A let us say your A is like this ok. Let us take a simple complex matrix. So, all these matrix 
that we discuss in the context of MIMO uh, are, are complex matrix because the complex numbers uh, denote the magnitude and phase of, of these, um, these coefficients and these signals. Okay. So, any signal can be represented uh, as, as this form, so magnitude and phase. So, this is the magnitude part and this is the phase part. Okay. So, they, they, they are complex numbers and uh, let us uh, let us take this matrix A as let us say 1 plus j, 1 minus j, um, just j and minus j. Okay. Let us say your A is this, then your A transpose will be A transpose will be you just invert the rows and columns. So, this will be the row now. So, this will be 1 plus j and j and this will be um, 1 minus j and minus j. So, this is A transpose and A Hermitian will be now take the complex conjugate of these. So, A Hermitians so, 1 plus j is complex conjugate is 1 minus j, j is complex conjugate is minus j, 1 minus j is 1 plus j and minus j is plus j. So, this will be A Hermitian. So, here whatever is your x, you take x Hermitian and then if you multiply this, basically this will give this summation. Okay. So, this is like the sum of the mod square of all these uh, all these uh, elements of this vector and this physically represent the total transmit power okay so all the input symbols if you take the sum of the modulus square then you get the total transmit power and the total transmit power cannot exist a certain limit okay uh, if if it exists a certain limit then your your design will not be very power efficient okay so you have to limit the total input power and that's the constraint that we have while we are trying to you know uh, uh, design a model for the mimo channel okay so now uh, there are a few other things uh, so let's say uh, we define the covariance matrices of the transmitted signals and the received signals like this. So, so we know what is a Hermitian now. So, if you take x and multiply it with x Hermitian and then take the expectation of this, then we get the covariance matrix for the transmitted signals and for the received signal we have this. And if you replace this y with h x plus n, where all of these are vectors, then <coughs> then you have uh, y y Hermitian is basically this. Uh, if you if you if you calculate y Hermitian, then this will be. x Hermitian times h Hermitian plus this okay. and then if you multiply these two you will get this term. Okay. So, <coughs> so now uh, the traces of this matrix, so trace means trace of a matrix means the diagonal elements. So, again few things we are revising from matrix algebra. So, trace means the diagonal elements. Okay. So, the traces of R x s and R y y give the total powers of the transmitted and received signals respectively. Okay. And the off diagonal elements 
of Rxs and Ryy give the correlations between the signals at different antenna elements. Okay. So, so usually the if you do not have any correlation between the other antenna elements then you have Rxx equal to the identity matrix okay. and your Ryy will, will be simplified to this where you have H H Hermitian plus Rnn which is the correlation matrix or sorry the covariance matrix for the noise. Okay. So, so usually uh, this thing is assuming that uh, that the power is 1. Okay. So, if you have an identity matrix of M then this is basically all the diagonal elements are 1 and the rest of the elements are 0. Okay. like this ok. So, these, these, these are the total powers of the transmitter and receive signal. So, uh, we are assuming that this total power is 1 here or, or normalized to 1 for this particular expression, but this is generally some constant c times i m ok. So, so that is uh, that is the scenario here. So, let us assume that this is I m for now okay, and then the we have R y y as this. Okay. So, so now if we want to now find out the capacity of a MIMO system uh, similar to a CISO cha channel. So, we have come across this uh, formula many times. So, this is the famous Shannon channel capacity formula. So, if you if you want to find out a similar formula or similar capacity for a MIMO system, you have to decompose the MIMO channel model into an equivalent parallel channels to derive the channel capacity equation. Okay. So, it is not easy to write. So, let us say these are the three input antennas and let us say these are the three output antennas. So, we, we are assuming a 3 cross 3 MIMO. So, these are coupled like this okay, and it is difficult to you know have a channel capacity formula for this channel. However, if you generate an equivalent model which is let us say, so let us say we have 3 antennas in the input 3 antennas and the output and then we have this parallel channels. Okay. So, uh, if we if we are able to generate an equivalent model which uh, which captures all the properties of this channel model. However, uh, this can be represented like this. So, where only the input antennas are coupled in a parallel way instead of having a coupling like this. Um, we are only coupled to one antenna at a time and let us let us assume that we can have a equivalent channel like this. So, in that case we can write the capacity formula for each of these three channels like this. So, assuming that this is this is three parallel CISO channels. Okay. So, then we can write this formula and then we can sum the total capacity together. So, we can have a sum. So, C can be expressed as a sum from i equal to 1 to 3 of the individual capacity C i is. Okay. So, for that you have to derive a, 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 a equivalent parallel channel. Okay. To, to, to calculate the capacity and how to calculate the equivalent or how to derive the equivalent parallel channel we will see right now. Okay. So, consider a MIMO system with a channel matrix H n cross m 
channel matrix H where we have N inputs and M outputs. So, you have this uh, relation between the inputs and the outputs in the presence of noise. So, now we will use a, a theory from matrix algebra which you have already learned in your um, in your early years in engineering or in high school maybe. Uh, so, this is called singular value decomposition. Okay. So, any matrix H can be written as a product of this uh, three matrices U, D and V Hermitian. So, where D is an N cross M diagonal matrix with non negative elements and U is an N cross N unitary matrix and V is a M cross M unitary matrix. And what, are, what does it mean by unitary matrix? It means that if you do this operation U times U Hermitian or U Hermitian times U, you will get an identity matrix of order N. So, remember U is an N cross N matrix. So, it is a square matrix. If you do this operation on U, you will get uh, identity matrix of order N. Okay. And similarly, for V also uh, you have this relation and V is an M cross M matrix. So, for V you will have this identity matrix of order M if you do this operation. So, this is the unitary property of these two matrices U and V. So, you can express any a, a matrix H which is N cross M according to this equation and, and these are the different components of the singular value decomposition taken on this matrix H. Okay. So, usually singular value decomposition um, uh, are basically done through, through this. So, basically D, I mean the diagonal elements of D are called the singular values of H and they are the non-negative square roots of the eigenvalues lambda of the following equation. So, if you solve these equations, then whatever roots you uh, will get for this lambda, okay, that will comprise the singular values of H. Okay. So, so if your n is less than m, then you have this equation to follow. If your n is greater than m, then you have this equation to follow. And if you find out the roots of this lambda from this equation, uh, then uh, the non-negative square roots, uh, <coughs> then you will have all the diagonal elements of D. Okay. So, so let us do an example. Okay. Uh, so, let us say my H matrix looks like this okay. and all the elements in H uh, is, is a real number. So, we do not have any complex numbers here. So, H H Hermitian is basically this. Okay. So, H Hermitian is just the transpose of H in this case. If H was a complex matrix, then you take the transpose and then you, you do the complex conjugate of all these individual elements in the transpose. In this case, since H has all real values, we just have H transpose. So, so for this particular case, you have H Hermitian is equal to H transpose basically, since all, all of them have real values. So, if you do H H transpose, uh, sorry H H Hermitian, then you get this matrix. And then uh, the eigenvalues of H H Hermitian will be these. Okay. So, basically, um, if you do times x equal to lambda x, then basically um, the eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 are the solution of this equation. So, determinant of H H Hermitian minus lambda times i, okay. this equal to 0, whatever this is. So, you will, if you solve for this, 
for all lambdas. So, uh, so as you saw, H H Hermitian is a three cross three matrix. So this is a three cross three matrix. Uh, so this I this will be I three here. Okay, and then you will have three roots of this equation. So lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, and these will be the roots. Okay, so the D matrix is still an n cross m matrix. So the original matrix was um, was this. So this was a four cross three matrix. So D is also a four cross three matrix, and then you have these diagonals of D which have these three values and and that is how you obtain D. Okay. Uh, and then if you can obtain D, then you can also obtain U and V okay, easily by equating H with U, D and V Hermitian and then also uh, using these properties of U and V, the unitary properties of U and V. So, that will give you a very co complicated calculation steps, but still you can do that or otherwise you can use MATLAB to use this command. So, any matrix H can be decomposed into its singular values by this command in MATLAB SVD. So, we can find the singular value decomposition of H using MATLAB also. So, <coughs> so if you have H, uh, the H that we have here, okay. sorry this H if you use MATLAB, then you can get the singular value decomposition of, of this. So, these are the three matrices. So, this is U, this is D and this is V Hermitian. Okay. So, <coughs> so, with that, let us go back to the capacity discussion now. So, let us say, uh, let us uh, let us believe that H can be you know express as this uh, as this singular value decomposition u d v Hermitian. So, if you replace h in y equal to h x plus n you will get y equal to u d v Hermitian times x plus n. Okay. So, now let us consider the following transformation. So, let us define a vector y prime which is this u Hermitian times y. Let us define x prime as v Hermitian times x and let us define n prime as u Hermitian times n. Okay. So, you will know why we do this very shortly. So, then if you if you do this transformations, then the first equation, this equation can be transformed as, uh, as this. So, if you now do if you multiply this equation with u Hermitian from both sides. So, you will get u Hermitian times y, then u Hermitian times u d v Hermitian x plus u Hermitian n. Okay. So, the direction of a matrix multiplication is important. So, if you are doing u Hermitian times x or u Hermitian times x or x times u Hermitian, these two may not be equal. Okay. So, this direction is important. So, we are multiplying from this side u Hermitian with y u Hermitian with this term and u Hermitian with noise. Okay. So, now considering this transformation, you can write this as y prime. So, this, this is y prime and then uh, this is uh, x prime. So, this part um, is x prime. Okay. Um, so, let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, so, ob okay. so, u Hermitian times u will give you i. So, that is the unitary property of u. So, this part will be just be d v Hermitian x and you can write this v Hermitian x as x prime. So, you have d x prime 
and then this part is n prime. So, you have n prime. So, basically you end up with an equation which is like this. So, y prime equal to d x prime plus n prime. Okay. So, now uh, this is the equivalent MIMO system. So, this basically uh, the original equation is y equal to h x plus n and we have y prime equal to d x prime plus n prime okay, where d is the matrix consisting of all these eigen values of h. Okay. So, this is the equivalent MIMO system why we will just prove. So, for the equivalent MIMO system if you now calculate the co covariance matrices. So, R y prime y prime is according to definition is this and um, y prime according to the transformation here is this. So, if you substitute that here then basically uh, this part the expectation of this part will give you R y y. Okay. So, basically expectation of y y Hermitian is r y y. So, we are using this and then we have this part and this part from two, two sides. Similarly, for uh, x prime we have this as the covariance matrix and for n prime this as the covariance matrix. So, now if you take the trace of all this covariance matrix. So, if you remember the trace or the diagonal elements of the covariance matrix gives you the power. Okay. So, if you take the trace of the covariance matrices of the transformed system, you will see that they are equal to the trace of the original covariance matrices because of these uh, properties. So, these u and v these matrices are unitary matrices. Okay. So, because of this properties of u and v because of this properties, if you take just the diagonal elements, you will see that this trace is equal. Okay. So, this means that the equivalent MIMO system has the same total input power and total output power and total noise power as the actual MIMO system. So, therefore, the output SNR of the equivalent MIMO system is thus the same as the actual MIMO system. So, we can consider what we obtain by this equation y prime equal to d x prime plus n prime is equivalent to the original MIMO system okay. because they have the same input power, noise power and output power. So, with this I, we can we can draw the equivalent model like this. So, if you have m greater than n, so you can draw all the m antennas here and the n receiving antennas like this and then uh, if your m is greater than n then for the first m receiving antennas you have the gain of the equivalent channels as the square root of this eigen values okay and then for the remaining the gain is zero okay so basically you have all these parallel channels okay uh, but since the number of input and output antennas are not equal so for the remaining you are assuming that this gain is zero okay if m equal to n then this is a square matrix. So, h will be a square matrix and therefore, d will also be a square matrix and, and the diagonal elements will only be the eigen values and then you can only have up to this part okay, when your m is equal to n. But when m is greater than n, then the remaining uh, from n plus 1 to m, you have 0 gain uh, parallel channel. And similarly, if your m is less than n, then you are assuming that you do not have the inputs here 
uh, but you have the outputs but then these are uh, these are having zero gains as well okay so this is the equivalent parallel mimo channel uh, so now we can easily write the expression for the capacity uh, using this uh, formula so each of this equivalent channel will have a capacity so let's say this will have c1 c2 uh, up to c m and then you can just sum the total capacity as the sum of this c i i equal to 1 to m and each of this c i will look like this so this will be b log 2 so so c according to shannon's Ch channel capacity formula b log 2 1 plus snr so each of this ci will be b log 2 1 plus the power the received power pyi dash divided by the noise uh, variance or noise power so <coughs> So, so if you now sum this for all i, um, uh, for all the receiving antennas r, then you get the total channel capacity for the MIMO system. So, where b is in hertz is the channel bandwidth, p y i dash is the power received at the ith receiving antenna, sigma square is the noise power at the ith receiving antenna and r is the rank of h. Okay. So, if H is a square matrix, then R is equal to uh, the, the order of the matrix, but otherwise uh, this, is, uh, this is less than or this is actually the minimum of you know M cross N. If H is M cross N, then R is basically the minimum of M and N. Okay. Um, so, uh, so R is the rank of H and then you run this sum from I equal to 1 to R. Okay. So, this is what we get. So, now there can be different cases for, for, for while calculating the capacity of a MIMO system. So, let us see what are those cases. So, so for the first case is that the channel state information is known to receiver only. The transmitter does not know the channel state info information. So, so if the transmitter does not know the channel state information, then its best strategy is to transmit power equally from all its transmitting antennas. Okay. So, under this situation the received power will be, so the transmitted power is P and then all of the antenna there if there are M transmit antennas. So, in that case uh, all of them are equally the, uh, transmitting the same power P divided by M and then if the gain of the ith channel is lambda i, I mean square root of lambda i let us say. Uh, so, this is uh, square root of lambda is for amplitude. So, for power you have to square this term. So, you have to multiply with lambda i. So, so the received power due to the ith channel is given by lambda i times p divided by m when the channel state information is not known by the transmitter. Now, if you replace this with this value in the original equation, uh, this equation, then uh, you have uh, this value so so this is the this is the simplification okay so this is the channel capacity of a mimo system when the channel state information is known to receiver only now let's uh, see another case where the channel state information is known to both the transmitter and the receiver okay so in that case if the transmitter knows the channel state information, the channel matrix H is known to the to the transmitter. Okay. 
So, in that case its best strategy will be to transmit more power along those channels whose channel gains are larger and to transmit less powers uh, or along those channels with a smaller channel gain and this is called the water filling principle. Okay. So, so, so let us see what that does that mean. So, this is an example. So, let us say this uh, blue signifies the noise level. So, these are the different channels. So, let us say we have 8 channels here and this is the power level. So, the blue signifies the noise level and the brown signifies the signal power level. Okay. So, the water filling uh, principle says that if the noise power is low let us say for this channel then you fill it up with more signal power. So, imagine that these are all uh, glasses. Okay. So, you have different glasses like this and, and they are filled up differently by the by the noise level. So, imagine that the noise that they have is, uh, is the initial initial level on these glasses. Okay. So, let us say they are filled up to certain extent and and and, and they signify this this signify the noise level. Okay. So, these are all the noise level. Now, you are pouring water okay, on these glasses okay, and you want to just fill them up to the brim. Okay. You just do not want to overfill them. Okay. So, just fill up to the brim. Okay. So, in that case the power that you can fill in the signal power that you can fill in is, is this much okay. whatever is the initial level plus this. So, this, this is what is called the water filling principle. So, essentially you end up with more signal power in those channels which have less noise power. Okay. So, this one is less noise power. So, you have more room for signal power. This one has more noise power. So, you have less room for signal power. So, in that way you fill up all these channels. Okay. So, basically this means that the channels which has uh, larger gain you are you are transmitting more powers along those channels which has larger gains and you are transmitting less powers along those channels with a smaller gain okay so if this strategy is followed then actually the output snr is maximized okay so if this strategy is followed then the transmitting power P i for the ith channel in the equivalent MIMO system is given by this. Okay. So, so, basically this equation says that the power that you can fill up for a channel i is inversely proportional to the gain of the channel. Okay. So, you see sigma square divided by lambda i. Okay. And then the maximum that you can fill is this limit mu. Okay. So, mu divided uh, sorry mu minus sigma square by lambda i is the power that you can fill up. So, if your lambda i is very high okay, then this term this minus term is low. Okay. If your lambda i is very high then this sigma square divided by lambda i is low. Okay. So, this negative contribution is low. So, you have you are subtracting less from this mu if your lambda i is high. So, in other words you are having more power if your lambda i is high. So, that is what is this strategy all about. So, if the channel gains are larger then you have more transmit power and now if your lambda i is low then this term sigma square divided by lambda i is high. So, you are subtracting more from this term and therefore, the p i is 
low ok. So, this is how you are you are selecting your input power ok uh, and, and this equation is consistent with this water filling principle basically. So, if you have more noise then you are filling it with less power, if you have uh, less noise then you are filling it with more power like and, and with this arrangement of P i for the ith channel uh, you have ok there is another thing if P i is negative in the above expression then it will be set to 0 ok. So, this is also very important ok. If P i is negative in the above expression then it will be set to 0 because you do not have uh, if P i negative means your noise is so high that it is like completely taking up the entire channel ok. So, it is the entire glass is filled up with blue water let us say and you cannot fill any power in that channel ok. So, therefore, your P i will be set to 0 ok if your P i is negative according to this equation ok. So, so with this arrangement uh, your received power for the ith channel will be lambda i times P i. So, that is lambda i mu minus sigma square and then if you replace this in the original channel capacity equation then the channel capacity becomes this. So, uh, let us uh, look into an example. So, so find the channel capacity of a MIMO system uh, with n equal to m equal to 1. So, basically this is a CISO system because n and m are 1 and the H matrix is also 1. So, assuming the total transmit power is P. So, so since your H is 1 the rank of H is also 1 and you have only one Eigen value lambda 1 which is equal to 1. So, in this case uh, if your transmitter has no knowledge of the channels then you are dividing the power across all the antennas and since you have only one antenna you have this as P and lambda 1 is also 1. So, you have this expression B log to 1 plus P over sigma square. Now, if you have uh, N equal to M equal to 4 and your uh, channel matrix has all the values equal to 1. So, basically this is how your channel matrix looks and assume that the transmitted power is P and the noise power is sigma square and the transmitter has no knowledge of the channel. So, in this case uh, your rank is 1 and your lam lambda 1 will have only one value and that is basically 16. So, you can find using singular value decomposition the value of lambda 1. So, this value happens to be 16 here. So, now if the transmitter does not know um, the channel condition. So, this P over M will be P over 4. So, basically this will be lambda 1 times p over 4 and since your lambda 1 is 16, this is 16 p over 4. So, that is 4 p here. So, then you have this expression ok. And finally, if you have the uh, if you have uh, the transmitter knowing the channel matrix or, or, or both the transmitter and receiver having the channel state information then in that case you will have um, you will have this case ok. So, the received power um, <coughs> so with the knowledge of age the transmitter can transmit power along only one channel because you have only one channel ok that is the channel with Eigen value lambda 1 and that means that you send all the channel through the uh, all the power through this channel and you have 16 p. So, uh, you have uh, this expression. So, if you compare the three expression uh, for examples 1, 2 and 3 you can see that for case 1 you had you had this for case 2 you had this
and for case 3 you had this. So, you can see that uh, the capacity is getting increased. So, this term is getting increased. So, therefore, if you are having a MIMO, so this was a CISO case. So, if you are having a MIMO, then you are gaining the cap in capacity because the factor of 4 comes here. And then within a MIMO, if the both the transmitter and receiver knows the channel state information, then you are getting further enhancement in the channel capacity. So, so with this I will stop here in this video lecture and I will continue uh, more in the next uh, video lecture. Thank you.